What's up everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Sit Down Saturday. Today is a video that has been long awaited. It's been a long time coming and I've been sitting on it for some time. It's at least sitting on the interview and today I finally get to broadcast that interview to you. There's no housekeeping this week because I did this video in advance because I was going to be out of town. I didn't want you guys to skip a beat. This year for Christmas you can feel free to buy me a cross so every time I feel unappreciated for my sacrifices I can just climb up and nail myself to it. But enough about me. Let's talk about this interview and there's a couple of things that we have to get out of the way regarding this interview. This this interview is with the gentleman who is the lead designer of the Vectrons Labs Devastator. He is going to be known as the guy or the designer. People are very protective of their names in this stuff and they want theirs protected. There's a couple other characters that we will introduce along the way, but this is the designer or the guy who I often call him sometimes. Secondly, usually with these interviews, you know I just let them run. I edit them a bit and I put video and stuff over top of them to try to keep it somewhat visually entertaining. It's not gonna be the way we're doing this one. We're gonna be doing edited clips and I'm going to be setting those clips up and then sort of rehashing them. This gentleman is Italian. He has a very heavy Italian accent, a gabagool. And as a result, sometimes it can be a little hard to follow. So I think it will be best for you guys if I kind of start putting the ball on the tee and I let him just knock it off. It's also important to know that this interview is two hours long in its entirety. That two hour long video will be on Patreon at the high level. If you are on Patreon, you have access to it already. If you would like to hear it, join the Patreon you won't regret it I post every day sometimes multiple times a day the only other thing that I think I should mention is you should watch my Vectron Labs video prior to this so you can have some sort of an understanding of where I felt the project was and what we knew so far about it so with that let's get started the designer was mainly inspired by 3d video games Tekken being a major contributor he ended up buying himself equipment and is self-taught in his designs he started off with a lot of statue work around 8 inch statues so probably one eighth to one seventh scale, and eventually met a third party company at a convention where upon introduction and exchange of information about each other, he kind of got his foot in the door of the business. Tell me when exactly you started to connect with third party companies. And there was a kind of Comic Con, and uh, there was somebody introducing his Transformers, a third party company, uh, but. Unfortunately, I signed to, how do you call it, the NDA. A non-disclosure. He has worked for multiple companies, and he has worked on what he thinks is a total of 14 toys, and he thinks I have some of them in my collection. He's not 100% sure, but he thinks so. He can't comment on exactly what toys. He gives some hints in the uncut, but there's nothing concrete that's said. And he can't comment on them because he has signed an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement, for every company he has ever worked with, bar one. You don't have, obviously I'm not going to ask you to say what that was, but was when it came out, was it well regarded? Yeah, very, very. Uh, I mean, wow, it was. Uh, they paid me like five months of my actual uh, income. So let's enter that one, shall we? That one is Vectron Labs. Vectron Labs is significant for him because it was going to be the only company to which he was actually doing total design work. A lot of his previous work was sculpt work on top of the transformation engineering that was already done. Uh, you know, you designed the, the main uh, concept, but uh, somebody finished your work. So right. I have made only the concept, the 3D concept uh, side, who actually made those transforming things uh, is uh, another guy. This is very common in the business. Somebody kind of works out the nuts and bolts of the engineering and another person comes on and sort of puts a face on it to make it look good. So it's kind of two people often that are responsible for the total package. But with Vectron Labs, it was going to namely be one, him. Now, as an Italian gentleman that's into Transformers, he is part of a community called Transformers Italia. And from this community, he knows a number of individuals as he's been a part of it for some time, going back a decade or so. And through this community, somebody contacted him to work on what would become the Vectron Labs project. That person we will call the founder. He is the founder of Vectron Labs. I got text from uh, from the guy, from the founder uh -huh. of Vectron Lab. That was January. And uh, uh, even before me, he was in touch with uh, Johannes Vinci. This guy of Italian community is also the main... The, the artist behind the fans toys covers, you know? Yes, yes, the box art of fans toys. Yeah, the box art, yes. Yes. Exactly, yes. He, he is the guy. And actually, he is a very exquisite person. 
very kind, it's very nice. Okay. So when uh, when I knew that the, the contact of this guy, the founder of uh, Vetron, was coming out uh, from uh, Italian Transform Transformers Italia com um, community, I just said, okay, let's listen what he talked about because it comes from a very serious uh, atmosphere, very serious, uh, nice community, you know. How to say, he, he's a seller. He knows how to sell, but uh, unfortunately, he sells smoke. Okay. Because... Uh, like, a, well, he, like we call like a snake oil salesman. Yeah, he's an engineer, and he presents himself very nice, very... Uh -huh. Professional. Yeah, yeah, very right. professional. He said to me, when we start, I'm going to call you, because, okay, I will give you a chance. He started working for them the 1st of February in a full-time capacity. He had been doing work for them previously, but he was doing work on other projects as well. But as the company and the stuff started taking off, the founder wanted him to work basically full-time, which he was happy to do. We start to work together in the 1st of February. In the first moment, I had also other jobs, but uh, day by day, he began to request more and more time. Okay, said, so wow, so okay. you were, you were brought on as the sole designer? Yes, the okay. sole designer of uh, the entire project. Okay. So I said, okay, and what do we start? Well, we start with a tune accurate uh, transforming uh, Devastator. You have to understand that when the Devastator Photoshop was revealed early on in the process, no design work had actually been done. So very early on. So where were you when that image came out and you as the sole designer, where were you in the process? Did you have anything figured out at that time? Did you have uh, sorry, anything sorry. done? Actually, uh, I had uh, I had quite uh, nothing, you know. We were not started uh, yet. But he started working on Scrapper. He mentions that there were many warning signs early on that things were perhaps not entirely on the up and up because it seemed like the founder didn't have a firm understanding of the numbers that are usually associated with third-party products. The number of pieces that are usually produced, distributed, and sold at what cost. His uh, mind was straight about 15,000 units production. 15,000 units. Yeah. With a street price of $300 each. 15,000 units at $300 is what, how? As a side note, many of you know that I have been driving myself crazy for the past eight years as to what is the average third party production run numbers wise. If you listen to the uncut, you'll get the answer. But it's not pertinent to this conversation. But I got to the bottom of it finally. But other warning signs include what the founder wanted in regard to the total use of diecast. Diecast is a problem that has been coming up more and more frequently on this channel, and it's no exception here. And he kept talking about, oh, we use diecast, everything diecast, diecast this, diecast that. Uh -huh. Calculation of uh, one of uh, his uh, diecast uh, theory, it's about uh, scrapper should be over one kilo. So about two and a quarter pounds. Yeah. Okay. So That's a heavy uh, figure. Well, too much, maybe, because if you are like me, with uh, usually everybody use that off, you know? Right. And, and you put uh, six kilograms is uh, nine pounds, uh, right? Nine pounds? Two, two and a half is uh, 15, 15 pounds of uh, Devastator. Yeah, on yeah. The mass of uh, that off. You're going to crash everything, even your floor. <laughs> right, so, right, right, uh, right. Diecast can't work in the same regards as ABS, plastics, and as a result, there was a number of issues almost from the giddy up regarding what the founder wanted and what was feasibly possible. And the legs of Scrapper are the legs of Scrapper, and because the top is very heavy, we have to make in diecast also the legs. I said that we have uh, four millimeters thickness of uh, wall uh, of uh, Scrapper leg, you know, and you want to put all diecast. Gonna be first one hell of transformation because you're gonna scratch everything soon right second the people gonna kill you on the road as soon as they buy third how much do you think gonna be possible to sell these toys i should also note that according to the designer the photoshop here which is of new age and one other devastator kind of combined is a frankenstein monster photoshop done by the founder now, there were other people involved in this mix as well. The gentleman that has done a lot of the third-party Fans Toys box art was brought on as the concept designer for the Vectron Lab. Did a lot of the artwork and such. But according to the guy, all of the parties were kind of kept separate and isolated.
isolated from one another, whereas in a perfect working relationship, they would be much more connected and much more involved working hand in hand as a team. It was a strange situation because the designers, the 3D designer and the concept designer should be working uh, straight, you know, with very close contact. Uh -huh. But he had uh, everything separated. The, I was working uh, on one chat, on one uh, side. He had a different chat with the concept maker. He had a different chat with another uh, guy. E everybody were, was uh, split, you know? Right. As a result, everybody was kind of talking to the founder about their situations with the other people involved artistically. And the founder, according to the designer, was using that to his advantage to almost turn them against one another, saying, well, the artist says it should be this. If you can't do it, what do you want me to say? And pr probably doing the same thing back to the artist. This eventually led to a pretty big fight on Easter Day between the creative people involved in this project. Things were said, feelings were hurt, lines were crossed. In the, in the meeting, uh, the concept artist, uh, of course, uh, because uh, he never saw anything, so everybody was uh, still uh, thinking that they could ask me to make uh, whatever the change they wanted, because there was nothing uh, inside the volume uh, to change, you know? Right. But I was already with the legs transforming. I was with a full transformable figure. And when they asked me, ah, please, two millimeter less on the tide. And I, and I started, that was when I fighted with, uh, I had a fight with them, uh -huh. with him, with the concept designer, because I said, there is volume inside, there is material inside. I cannot take away two millimeters. But I think uh, I am uh, the designer. If I say you something, you have to do. And then we fought. But uh, after that, uh, with cool mind, I could understand what happened. But, and it was uh, actually simple to understand. That, uh, the founder uses uh, your weakness, you know, you know, your character. I'm a very strong, proud guy. So the founder always look your uh, your spot and use them uh, to get you. So with me, he was talking bad about uh, the concept artist. With the concept artist, he gave the default of everything to me. It's sad for me because I think uh, how much stupid I could be. And everything because he promised me the, my dream job, making a Transformer as a main designer, you know? Right. Now, in addition to this, another person from the Transformers Italia community was brought on. We're going to call him the scientist. Smart guy was going to work out a lot of the issues, supposedly. Now, he has been friends with both of these gentlemen, the concept designer and the designer, for years. They've all known each other for years. The only one that's kind of new to their circle is the founder, the one responsible for the project overall. I said you, we come from uh, TF Italia, uh, Transformers Italian community. And uh, the funny thing uh, is that we are all friends, like 10 years friends. Oh, so you all know you each know, other. Uh, yeah. And he's talking. But he and, doesn't know us. <laughs> and he doesn't know you guys. And he's talking all of these horrible things about people that are your friends already, that you already know. Yes. And to give you another example of how their isolation almost turned them against one another, the founder had told the designer, our guy, that the scientist thought he should be paid less because he wasn't as educated. This guy, it's very important to me. And in the same moment, very important to the concept artist. So, okay, so a mutual friend that's important to both of you. The founder tried to do the same the same uh, game between me and uh, this uh, mutual guy. Uh, I have a kind of complex about my degrees, you know, because your education, like uh, like yeah, higher education. higher education. Yes. So yeah, so you got a, you got a little bit of a complex, a little bit of an insecurity yeah, about yeah. it, something that you didn't get to do. So so how did they use that against you? So and. He he is a straight guy, so he said, uh, man, you don't have your degrees, but so by the way, not uh, 1500, but you should be taken, should be taken 1200. This is the clue that tipped the designer off that something was rotten in Denmark, because he has a very close history with the scientist. Contacted him directly, found out there was no truth to it. In fact, the scientist just said, if you can't afford to pay people, just tell people what you can afford to pay them and then pay them that. And he said, wait, 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 I don't think so. I just think that if he can't afford your wedge, he should be, say you straight and say you, man, I can't pay you that much. I can, you pay, I can pay less. Uh, and by the way, 
pay you. I know we're talking about money and payment and we haven't quite got there yet, but it all makes sense in a second, bear with me. But that's what led the designer to realize he was being lied to in his opinion from the founder. And this was easily done because they were all isolated. Now let's talk Turkey, shall we? When the designer was brought on full time, it was in February. And the agreement between him and the founder was that there would be a monthly wage. This wage was to be paid at the end of every month. At the end of February, he received a wage. In uh, in February, in the end of February, he paid me my, my wage. He needed so much of your time. And yeah. for you to commit that much time, you needed him to commit to you financially. Yeah, exactly. So I said, because of paying me by normal way to pay me, uh, by the months uh, gonna cost you a lot. But as we moved into March, the designer needed a little bit more money. So he asked the founder for an advance on said money. The founder gave him the advance, but at the end of March, he did not pay him the remainder of the advance. I have to be honest. Sometimes I asked some money, yeah, can you give me some first, uh, you know, because uh, I'm strict on these, I'm strict on that, uh, I have uh, bills to pay. Uh, he gave me some money, you know. Uh, okay. I don't know in English how you tell you. Uh, no, you don't have to tell me how much. You don't have to tell me how much, but like, but like, there was times that he was supposed to pay you a monthly wage. He's supposed to pay you at the end of the month. There was times basically where you needed an advance, and he would give you a yeah, little bit in of advance. It. Okay. okay, so uh, while while working on March, I asked him some advance, and he gave to me. Okay, but in the end of March, he didn't pay me the the remainder. The remainder, and I said, "Well, bad. okay." April came. No money. May came. No money. From March, we passed to April. End of April, yet nothing. During this time, the designer sold off his collection, sold off his 3D printers to make ends meet. And for me, it was a serious problem. I sure. repeat, sure. I had to sell my, my collection, had to sell my printers, so I had complete uh, no way to sell any object to, to get some cash in, you know? So, wow. Yeah, man, that, that, was, that was a heap of a trouble. Come June, enough was enough, and the designer walked away. Okay, man, now I stop working. Uh, when you pay me, I start the game. That sounds fair. And uh, what was, uh, yes. Unfortunately, my first work as main designer is made by, made with this guy. Actually, I for one moment I thought, okay, f*** off uh, all the Transformers. Right. <laughs> Third party companies, I don't want to do anymore. Nothing with anybody. Around this time, the concept artist also walked away. So where are we at? now well the designer said that he would consider signing an nda at this point which the founder was very interested in due to their falling apart and rumors of me talking to him that the designer said he would consider it if he was paid for his back wages and he was but he did not sign the nda so the designer ultimately landed on his feet but barely and not without sacrifice as for what the designer is doing now he is shopping his portfolio and trying to get more work actually i'm uh, i'm i got the, i got your uh, your contact i got uh, some uh, some you know some contact of to some third party and uh, they asked me my portfolio, my personal portfolio. The only other thing that I really have to offer is we were talking about recently the difference between 3D printed proof of concepts and actual prototypes produced and manufactured in a factory. And the designer was talking about the 3D printed scrapper that we saw and said that it was ultimately useless and not indicative of all of what the mold would be, which is what we discussed on this channel or theorized on this channel and once again has had, have had confirmed. You know, in the business, that's nothing. Right, Those, uh, right. It's it's uh, like almost like I've, I've heard the term proof of concept or something like that. Yeah, that's something you use for concepting. So where are we now with Vectron? labs. Well, we know that the designer has walked away. We know that the concept artist has walked away. I would assume the scientist has walked away. Luckily, their friendships have all been melded and they are all fine again. And Vectron Labs is back to producing photoshopped images of what their Devastator will look like. So I would say not looking good. That being said, there are three sides to every story. This is only one. I would definitely be interested in hearing the other. Usually the truth lies somewhat in the middle, but all of the evidence supports the information in this interview. I'm pressed for time. I hope that explained the situation enough. I had theorized in my previous Vectron Labs video that there was probably a money issue. That was in the video that I did with also Light Toys and HTB, and it turned out to be 100% correct. Bobby's crazy till Bobby's right. If you want the full interview with all of the details, hit the Patreon. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.